Alright, today we have a look at a plant species that somehow is an ant nest in my vivarium, including an ant colony, of course. I'm also so sorry for the update delay, I hope you can bear with me, and the reason is because of tons of homework and school until exams this May. This video will basically be my Easter vacation. <laughs> oh man. But please don't unsubscribe if I like don't post in a while. I promise you that as long as I am alive, one damn Nordic Ants Vivarium update will pop up in your subscription box. Enjoy! Welcome back to the vivarium. Before we start, so you guys remember this huge slug we saw in the vivarium some updates ago. A gargantuan beast. Well, I really wanted to ID this guy, but the only similar species that I was able to find was this apparently endangered Canadian dromedary jumping slug. Sounds weird, right? <laughs> Do you guys have any ideas about what species this might be? because I'm really intrigued. Plus, it has asexually reproduced in the vivarium as well. Check out this cute little baby. Oh man, how cool is that? And check out its back, it's like opening up and stuff. Anyways, talking about reproduction, I must say that I'm impressed concerning all the life that this vivarium is generating at the moment. I often find used pupae like these in many forms all around this magnificent vivarium. Many insects just fly in, lay eggs, and then the newborn fly out. I really feel that this haven is contributing. It is really important also to care about your vivarium inhabitants, on both an individual level and a species level, in order to make it prosper in diversity and numbers. If you care for them, they will pay you back in awesomeness. A good example is how, in my latest remake of the vivarium, decided to give my arboreal species some more space. They now have a great complex of tree crowns and intertwined branches. And guess what's up now? The arboreal biodiversity is kicking in. Here is a turtle ant queen that flew in the vivarium looking for somewhere to found her nest. These turtle ants are super resilient to pressurized physical damage. You could literally squish one of these between your fingers as hard as you can without it taking any lethal damage. But please don't try. <laughs> and continuing, let's have a look around to see who is living up here. Because I want to know. Hmm. Well, here we can spot some ants. Probably tending some invisible aphids or maybe nectar from some sprouts or something. Interesting. Okay, moving on. Hmm, I feel the presence of someone big. Can you feel it as well? Can you see him? Oh my god, you really thought you would escape my camera, Mr. Fat Cricket? Come here. Well, he really is hiding, isn't he? Well, let's have a look at this camera shy beauty. Oh, look at the Argentina in the bottom left corner as well. Okay, whatever, let's continue. He looks shy, maybe he is... Oh, here we go. This is why he was hiding. Let's have a further look. Man, there is so much life in the trees here. And I'm serious, like, I could almost make a BBC documentary right here, right now. Like, oh hey, we have a point with legs climbing up the trees. And here we have a spider with nice coloration. And moving on, we have weird, weird, weird bug 
standing in a tree crown. Okay, I probably offended like all the English speaking countries at once uh, and probably myself as well, my integrity. But yeah, you just watch the tape, don't listen to me. There's so much going on up in the trees. It's mesmerizing. Holy moly, this video was initially about a new plant and oh, uh, let's get right into it now. So story time. I was wandering by a pristine river deep in the Thai jungle. There were loads of fish and other animals. The most extraordinary were these red ants that I have never seen before. They were so cool to look at and I was fascinated to what extent nature would specialize her wonderful offspring. But of course this was not enough and she spoiled me by showing me this guy, a specialized mimicking spider that was specialized on mimicking the specialized red ants. How amazing is that? Nature is truly complex to an unimaginable extent. But furthermore, I could notice small arboreal plants up in the tree crowns. They were hard to spot, but soon I saw them everywhere. I even stumbled upon one that apparently had been taken down by a bird. And the reason why became obvious. This was a Myrmecodia plant. Oh my god, guys, these are like the coolest. Also known as ant plants, they live in a mutualistic association with a colony of ants since they possess structural adaptations that provides ants with food and shelter inside them, as you can see. Myrmecodia are also classified as epiphytes. Epiphytes or epiphytes, I don't, I don't know how to spell it. Uh, plants are sometimes called air plants because they do not root in soil. An epiphyte plant grows harmlessly upon a tree, like you can see. All of them were teeming with ants and brood inside. And I finally decided to bring back one of the dead Myrmecodia plants that had fallen down to try and make one of our vivarium ant species to move into it. Or even better, revive the plant. Probably not gonna happen though. But believe it or not, there was actually an ant colony still inside it. Oh my, does this mean that the plant is still alive? Well, I can't know, but that would be truly awesome. I had kept the dead plant in a sealed plastic bag for the day and I was very surprised to see the ants pouring out. But who were these guys? And more importantly, could they be to any threat to our ecosystem? As you can see in the morning they were very busy moving brood to somewhere in the vivarium. I couldn't figure out where because they seemed to all go to different locations. But one spot was easy to locate since it was very close to the plant between the roots and the rock formation. But strangely enough, they later seemed to instead move back the brood, back to the ant plant. It was so cool to observe them go in and out of the ant's entrance points. But here I could to my surprise see some fatal big-headed ants moving in from one side. And on the other side, the, well, the new ants were just still having their fair share of the territory. By experience I identified them as chromatogaster, but I hope you guys have some other ideas and please comment what species or even genus you guys think they belong to. But now we can just hope that they prosper in this lush environment. They have often been present on time lapses such as this one, a breakdancing, probably chromatogaster ant up here. Have a look, pretty funny. Well, this is actually a time-lapse of the least active part of the vivarium. I thought it would be interesting if there is any special animals that like this sort of space, more free space, so to speak. And oh, wait, hold on, you saw that? Let's see that one more time. <gasps> Once more. Well, this 
this yeah this is beyond whatever I, I don't even know what's in my vivarium anymore anyways thank you very much for watching this update and as i said before the intervals between updates may be long but stay subscribed and updates will eventually pop up showcasing these amazingly complex vivariums and i have huge plans this summer let's bring back the nordic species in an equally huge vivarium this summer <laughs>